Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. So there would be like, um, like with the Desi community, mm -hmm. there would be little racist things that would be happening. Mm -hmm. Like people are trying to force you to get married, but they're trying to force you to get married to people in the cult, in the community that nobody wants to marry. Mm -hmm. And when they're talking their language, you hear them using different words that if you I knew what they were talking about, they'd then, get knocked out. Yeah, yeah, back then. Yeah. Calling like you Kalu and stuff like this, yeah, which yeah. is like a nigger in their language. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, Hearing them talk, and then they would do certain things to try to make you like them. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to show them, I don't want to be like that. I want to be a Muslim. I didn't yeah. become Muslim to, to be, be a Pakistani yeah, yeah. or an Indian. I became Muslim because I want to be like the Prophet Islam. I want to learn how to love God. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm never going to be the best one, mm -hmm. but I would rather be doing wrong on the right path than be doing wrong on the wrong path. Mm -hmm. And I tried to make this very clear to them. Mm -hmm. But they keep taking me to their cultural things and like it's like you can't be Muslim unless you follow their cultural version of Islam. Yeah. And that really uh, messed me up. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we'd go and knock on people's doors mm -hmm. and they had this thing where it's like you have to go and visit Muslims. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to knock on these doors. One brother, he comes to the door and the guy's like, brother, I am Pakistani. You are Pakistani. We have our community and for this there's going to be a talk. You should come to the masjid. <laughs> and I'm standing there and I'm like, what Am I happening? a Pakistani too? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? I have to watch Did all I of this. Did I get my passport in the mail or something? <laughs> Other times, we knock on people's door, mm. you get the wrong door. It's a non-Muslim. Mm. And I just start talking. And then the emir, because you have like three people, mm. emir, rubber, and the mutakalla. Mm. And the mutakallam is talking, the emir, he's doing the organizing and the leading. And then um, the rubber, he's finding the right people that you're supposed to go to. Mm. So, we knock on the door, and you start talking, and the guy interrupts you and he's like, I gotta tell you, I'm not Muslim, but I like what I'm hearing, so please continue. Mm. Like, no, 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 sorry, we're only going to visit the Muslims, we're looking for somebody specific, let's wow. go. And I tell this guy, I'm not going. <laughs> Uh, and he's like, you can't do that, you have to obey the Amir. Uh, and I was like, he's not Muslim, he wants to hear about it. Mm. Let him listen. Mm. And he's like, you have to come. And I was like, no, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to talk to him. Mm. And um, they kind of shun you for these kind of actions. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, it's like, nobody's coming to my parents' house yep. to give da'wah to them. I'm going to all your people's parents' house to give da'wah to them. Mm -hmm. And when I, when, when, when your people die, even if they were like the worst Muslims, one day they'll make it to Jannah. Mm -hmm. But if I don't get my parents' da'wah, mm -hmm. what's going to happen to them? Yeah. And the da'wah is not even supposed to be for the non for the Muslims. Yep. It's supposed to be for, for the non-Muslims. Non -Muslims. Yep. But they have this thing where they say, you close the front door, I mean you close the back door first and stop people from leaving, and then you open the front door and let the floodgates in. Mm -hmm. And that's the game that they were playing with it. But I was like, if I'm not going to be allowed to give da'wah to my own family. Mm. I'm not going to waste my time giving da'wah to yours. Mm. So I stopped that mm. and I left it and I was like, okay, well, I don't want to be going to their culture. Mm. So then you start going to masjids that are dominated by, it seems like, Arabs. And mm. then they're trying to put their Arab culture on you, mm. but then you find they have a disgusting culture of racism inside of their yeah. culture. Yeah. And it's like, why are they treating you like this when majority of the stories in the Quran are about black people mm -hmm. and you guys see the way that the Prophet when he Sorry. conquered Mecca he got a black slave, to, a freed slave to stand on top of the Kaaba. That was an example. Mm -hmm. There was a reason why he did that. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing in Islam that's teaching you guys racism which means you're being the... You're teaching yeah, yourselves that. You guys are teaching yourselves that. Mm -hmm. And you came from the worst of people mm -hmm. to show that Islam can bring you out of the deepest, darkest place. Of like you used to bury your children alive. Mm. You were the worst of people. 
and it brought you to the best of people. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to your culture and leave what Islam taught you, you go back to being the worst of people. Mm -hmm. And most of them, they try to hold on to their Islam and culture, lying to themselves. So it's like, fine, I don't want to be an Arab. Mm -hmm. I just want to be Muslim. Mm -hmm. So cool, let me go around black people. So start going to Abu Hurairah Center. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. At least they were black and like at least they were... Abu Hurairah is um, another massive, very big masjid in, in Toronto yeah. near Scarborough. It's mostly so Somali dominated. And one thing I noticed there is that um, they were speaking with evidence. Mm -hmm. Nothing was just like with the Desi community where you just say something and yeah. everybody just has to believe it. Yeah, yeah. This beautiful Sheikh in uh, Reza Madin, he had a dream that he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this and this and this. So we have to and do everybody's this. like, SubhanAllah, yeah. SubhanAllah. And it's like, we, can't, we have no way to verify this, this information. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever is happening over at um, Abu Ghraib Center, it was like the Prophet yeah. said, said this. Allah, Allah said this in Surah da, da, da. Every single thing had a reference and mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. There was no deen coming from uh, somebody's culture. It was coming from what the Prophet so, so, said. But when you start to get deeper into the organization you you find the somali undertone behind the behind the scenes mm -hmm. and then you see the tribalism mm -hmm. and then people would literally come up to you and be like you wish you were somali right <laughs> and it's like what <laughs> like, i don't think you guys realize what is happening here yeah, yeah, yeah. but everywhere you go mm -hmm. you're shunned yeah and you don't realize why you're shunned mm -hmm. because you've never experienced racism before you became Muslim. You did, you just didn't recognize it as racism. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're Muslim, it's right in your face, blatant, clear racism. Yep. Like before Islam, it's like your teacher is cheating your grade and you're making excuses for your teacher, thinking mm -hmm. that they're making a, mis uh, making a mistake, mm -hmm. not realizing they hate black people and they're really trying it's to keep you down. Exactly. Yeah. But you're making that happened to me, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that that legit happened to me. Yes, uh, and and uh, there was one point where my parents got involved. But anyway, that's a different story. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> and uh, even in grade two, mm -hmm. my like my I grew up in Chester Lee, mm -hmm. but my mom wanted me to get a better education than the mm -hmm. people who were over there and mm -hmm. be away from them. So we got sent to like uh, um, a middle school. class school. Yeah, we had to walk a couple of miles to go to that school, mm -hmm. and. Um, most of the teachers, actually all the teachers except for one or two were white, the one or two were Chinese. Mm. And um, most of the students, they were white, Chinese, you had a couple of uh, blacks, mm. and um, maybe one or two Indians. And um, they hated me. Mm. And I didn't even know, I was just a kid, six, seven years old. Mm. And I did the work just like everybody else. I'd go home and do my homework. I'd come back to school. It's easy stuff. Mm. And she failed me in the second grade. Mm. And I was like seven years old. Wow, man. If you can fail a seven-year-old, mm. the problem is not the student. The problem is the, the teacher. teacher. Yeah. You're a kid, mm. but you don't recognize it as racism. Yeah. Because you're so young, you don't even you re recognize, realize yeah. what it is. Yeah. Police you're, come. You're innocent. In, yeah. You're so innocent. Mm. Or the principal. Um, some white kid will smash an Oreo cookie on my head mm. and I'll take one of his cookies and do it to him, mm. I get suspended three days. Wow. And when you go to the principal's office, he closes the door at Mr. Harding and he starts shouting at you. Mm. Push you against the door to the doorknob hits your spine Oof. and you're in pain. And he sends you home, but you think this is happening to everybody who gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. So you're not telling your parents about it. Mm -hmm. You're just going about your day like it's normal. Mm -hmm. It's not till you get older when you start to realize that was racism. Yep. But when it's with the Muslim community, it's right in your, your face. face. Yep. Like sometimes you'll be praying beside somebody, this guy smells like a zoo. <laughs> and the other guy beside you, he smells like onions <laughs> and he's burping up some like <laughs> dal and lentils or whatever he ate for dinner. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're there smelling like CK1. <laughs> and because you're black, he's trying to move away so that you're not touching. Yeah. He's trying to move his feet away so you're not touching his feet. Mm -hmm. They come to the masjid and it's like, the Afghanistan starts getting bombed out. It's like, brother, brother donations. Your brothers in Afghanistan are suffering. Mm -hmm. And then you see another black brother. He met an Afghani girl in, in the university. Mm -hmm. He wants to marry her. Mm -hmm. And his her whole family curses her. They lock her up. Mm -hmm. They start to insult him. They're ready to call the police on him. So what, he's your brother when you want his money? Yeah. And he's not your brother 
when he wants to marry your daughter? Yep. Yep. And that was that that disturbed me. Mm, that's why we're tired of hearing, you know, the 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 Muslim the brother like the Muslim man. You know, we as black converts we practice that. Mm. We practice that. We believe that. And especially when you become Muslim man, in the beginning, man. Mm. That's something that we practice and we believe. And we have to learn that what the Prophet said and what the Muslims are doing are two completely different things. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Mm. And I, I, I literally do. I, mm. I love and treat Muslims, mm. no matter where they're from, mm -hmm. like they're my brothers. Mm -hmm. But we got to be honest with ourselves if we're going to actually improve and change the deen. Mm -hmm. The Desis, they have their culture coming from Hinduism. Mm -hmm. And Hinduism has that caste system, caste system hierarchy very where there's lots of racism in there. Yeah. Um, you have the Arab culture, which has always been had that racist, uh, racism behind it like in a huge way and it's just blatant in your face it's not like trying to sugarcoat it it's straight racism mm -hmm. and um it happens all over the muslim world mm -hmm. and with what we've seen with the media and the news in the last um 60 to 100 years mm -hmm. it's only intensified it and increased it mm -hmm. so when you see like um black people having these problems and um, they're trying to be far away from the Muslim community. It's not because they don't want to practice Islam. It's because they don't feel comfortable and safe anywhere amongst the Muslims. Yep. You leave the, the Muslim community, you don't feel comfortable and safe with anybody out there. But at least they'll treat you more like a human mm. out there than they do inside the community. Because mm. it's like the only way they're going to accept you in the community is if you pretend not to be yourself and pretend to be like them. Yeah. And we'll give you some um, mentally disturbed uh, girl with like um, <laughs> Alzheimer's or ADD or yeah, something. Three or, fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll give you that because we need to get her married and everybody mm. will shame the family. Mm. But at least she will be married. Yeah. And the father will not have to worry about his daughter. Mm. But to have one of the women that we would actually marry, no. Mm. I remember even Hef was telling me in Markham why he left that area. He said... Um, they said that he was bringing too much reverts and he's like, I thought you wanted people to come to Islam. He's like, no, then we have to marry them to our daughters. Yeah. And it's like, what is happening? Mm. Like, I remember before Islam, you looked at all these people and they were the most disgusting for different reasons. Mm. But you became Muslim and you loved them with your whole heart. Mm. And you never judged them because of those reasons ever mm. again. Mm. But you come in and they immediately look at you like you're something less. Yeah, like you're an alien. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, like you don't belong there. Mm. But if it was a Becky who became Muslim, <laughs> you'd have 30 different brothers coming and trying yeah. to ask for her hand in marriage before yep. she even took the Shahada. Yeah. <laughs> so Can I marry her, please? <laughs> like, go, Auntie, please go ask her for my hand in marriage. Yeah. It's like, it's so <laughs> sick. And the problem, the, the, what, what bothers me the most is that they don't even recognize it as a problem. Yeah. It's like they really don't see the, yeah. the sickness in them. Because, you know, in Eastern culture, it's it's just different from the West. Yeah. In, e in the East, they pretty much accept racism as a, as a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have no problems with racism. But because racism has a very evil, dark um, history in mm -hmm. the West, we don't tolerate it. Yeah. Not, not at all, man. We, we ain't down with that, man. No, 100%. We, we, we are not down with that. Anybody who has mm. racism in them mm -hmm. has a quality of shaitan. Yeah. You remember when Allah told the angels and everybody who was there to bow before Adam, mm -hmm. racism. Mm -hmm. I am not going to bow before him. I'm created from fire and he's created from clay. Mm -hmm. That's racism. Mm -hmm. And those are the qualities that you people are taking pride in today. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I need somebody to love me. I need somebody to make me. F but what about all the other people who are becoming Muslim and leaving Islam because they can't stand these things? I've seen white Muslims mm -hmm. leave Islam because they can't stand to see the sickness of the cultural um, racism, discriminations, bias, prejudice, arrogance, mm -hmm. tribalism. Yeah. They that, can't that's stand that. That's a thing. That is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, you 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 um, become Muslim for the for the right reason, and until, alhamdulillah, we got to study Tawheed and Aqidah. Yeah. Because if I didn't study Tawheed and Aqidah, I don't know how I would still be Muslim. Yeah. Like, you're talking about being around 
some of the most disgusting people you've ever met in your entire life mm. and to call them brothers mm. and they just treat you like crap and try to shun you. Mm -hmm. How are you ever going to stay close to this deen? Mm -hmm. You have to have a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. Once you got that tawheed and aqidah, you understand. You're, you're not even here for them. Mm -hmm. You're here for Allah. All that crap that they're doing to you, you're going to get ajr for it. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, when, when you don't correct these things, it becomes a problem for people who might not be able to handle it. Yeah. We grew up in like the 80s and 90s. And mm -hmm. Come on, we grew up making mama jokes and getting into fights yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. We're not sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, if we don't, you can, you can call us the worst name in the world. Yeah. And I guarantee you that word bothers you more than it bothers me. Yeah. And you're the one saying it to me. Yeah. <laughs> but. But there's other people who who don't who don't have that same that same uh, it's roughness. This, this, to them. this generation. Yes, this generation. This generation very very. It's, the, it's that social media. Yeah. Wanting to be liked and accepted. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when, when when I say on, on my my YouTube, I say like I don't really care who likes me. Like I actually mean that crap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could care less because you, truth is truth, man. And mm. if you're speaking the truth, nobody's gonna like you. That's just how it goes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but to, to, to this this generation is is basically caught in this cycle of social media where they need acceptance 100%. from hundreds of people that they don't know and will never care about them anyway. Yeah, you know, and uh, social media makes you brave behind a computer, man. Mm. You know what I mean? It, uh, uh, it makes the coward brave. Yeah. And then it makes the brave cowards. That's yeah. what Mufti and that's true. It is a very true statement. It's true, yeah. you know. They don't, um, they're too plugged into the matrix. Yeah. Like right now, they're, they're all plugged into the matrix where it's like, um, you're so concerned with what everybody else thinks of you, mm. you, you're scared to offend anybody. Yeah. You can't call a spade a spade because the club is going to get offended. Exactly. And, th <laughs> and things do not get done like that. Yeah. I'm sorry. If you if you want to accomplish anything, if you're worried about people liking you, you will never accomplish anything. You'll yeah. never get everybody to like you all the time. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. There's always going to be people who don't like you. You just got to know who you are and be yourself. If you want people to like you, sell ice cream or something. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and even still, some parents are going to think shady about you, let you're exactly. a pedophile. Exactly. I'm or lactose intolerant. <laughs> Why did you pick that career? <laughs> How many cows had to get their nipples squeezed for, for, you, for you to... <laughs> you know, it's always going to be something. You can't, you can't please anybody. But when it comes to religion, too, all the, the, the um, occupation of the prophets, the MBA, was to teach the people the truth. That was their occupation. They got fought for this. They got tortured for this. Some of them got killed for, for this. Many of them had no followers for this. Mm. You know what I mean? But that was their occupation. So if you plan on even taking even just a hundredth of that occupation, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get spit in your face, man. Yeah, hundred percent. So Anyway, when I say I don't care, I, I like I really mean that. Like it's like from my heart, I don't care what people think about. Hundred percent. And we're, we're family, man. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like we don't have time to see who likes me and who doesn't like me. Yeah. If you got a problem with me, find somebody who you like. Mm -hmm. Because I'm too busy taking care of my dean, my kids, my wife, trying to make sure that I'm keeping everything stabilized and organized and keeping peace in my home. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for the whole. You love me? Yes, I love you. Yes. 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 Yes.